Hey Zoe, that's my pattern. Are you gonna help me sew a witch skirt? Is it witch skirt day? All right, well let's get to sewing. Welcome back to my channel, beautiful humans. My name is Meredith, and today we are going to be working on some fun vintage clothing here. For a friend's party, I really wanted to go and make myself a little witch outfit, and we were kind of doing themes, so I was trying to do a kitchen witch. What better way to do that than some easy house dress from the 1950s, right? So for this, I went over to Joann's. I picked up some of their Halloween cotton that they had on sale and grabbed one of these little patterns off of their simplicity sale they were having. I'll put the simplicity pattern number down in the bottom if it flashed across the screen too quickly for you. That way we can definitely get you sewing one of these dresses too if you want. One of the first things I always do when I'm sewing with a commercial pattern is I'm going to cut it out of the tissue paper. I do not hold these tissue paper patterns to be near and dear unless it's something that is antique, vintage, something along those lines. The stuff that I get reprinted over at Joann's is something that I can replace. Whether it's going down there if I really like it and buying another one, or usually I can find a replacement on eBay if I mess it up too much. Next thing you need to do, especially with quilters cotton like this, is you need to wash it so that it gets pre-shrunk. You get all the sizing out and have it ready to work with when you go to start sewing. Believe it or not, I did actually iron this cotton before I started working on it. It's just being cotton and has a tendency to wrinkle really badly. So don't mind me while I smooth this out a bit. That way we can start working. All right, I have to show you something that is super weird. It looks like when they were packaging this pattern, they sent me three copies of the same sheet because I have way too many copies of just three pattern pieces. It's like cuffs and facings and just two of the skirt panels. They're all the same size. It's not even like they were trying to package in the kids version with this pattern and the grown-up version. It's just all the grown-up version, but they gave me way too many pattern pieces. So, yeah, take a look at this. We've got the facing times three. I've got my side fronts times three. My side backs. And over in that pile, there were a couple, I want to say it was just facings or cuffs or something. So yeah. Um, don't know what the story was with that, but at least I now understand why it felt like I was cutting out pattern pieces forever this time. Um, have you ever had a weird pattern company glitch like that before? Um, if you have, tell me about it down in the comments while I get to laying out my witchy skirt.
By the way, when you're laying out your skirt, be sure to check if your cotton is directional or not. I end up having to repin before I start cutting all of these pattern pieces because I pinned stuff in upside down and was going to have upside down skulls and everything on my skirt. So be, be better than me. Check your direction before you start pinning. Okay, so cutting update. I am on the side panels for the back, and because my pattern is very directional, it's kind of splotchy and I don't necessarily care about pattern matching all of the little splotchy design elements, but I really don't want something flipped upside down. So we are going to piece that corner in on each of these because the amount of fabric I ordered is not quite enough to get the full two back panels I need. So here we go. Watch and learn about a little piecing. And let's face it, these skirts from the 50s, I can see why coming out of rationing they would have been so popular. There is so much fabric waste. There is an entire pile of fabric cut off up on my pillow that is just left over from these swoopy bits. There's more over there. So yeah, we're going to piece that corner of the skirt a la my historical end of things rather than 20th century vintage etc. And call it a day because it's a side panel in the back. This will be like under my armpit.
one of the things I really wanted to do with the skirt construction was French seaming. And the reason for that is that I didn't want to have to get out a serger or go to a friend's place. Believe it or not, I don't own a serger because I hate threading them. So with the French seaming, you're going to start with the right sides facing out. Sew your seam, press some stuff. Press your seam around once you fold everything so that your raw edges are encased and stitch down that edge again. If this doesn't make sense, go ahead and rewind the video about 15 seconds and keep watching through this next portion. It'll make a lot more sense as you go. As a best practice for the cleanest French seams, you should probably bust out an iron. I was trying to get this done super quick in two days for a party. So my French seams are kind of sloppy. I did press them out pretty well by hand, but there's a couple spots where it did bubble because I was trying to cut a corner. I don't know if I've told this story on this channel before, but one of the reasons I don't do a lot of 20th century sewing is I have a love-hate relationship with zippers. I really honestly have always hated putting them in, whether I was in the costume shop or making a personal project like this for myself. Of the options I have, I I'm better at putting in traditional metal zippers than I am at putting in invisible zippers or some of the other ones. So that's what I went with was a vintage metal zipper that was approximately the right length for this project. I basted it in as well before I went and started sewing it down on the machine just to keep it from wiggling and the overlap going anywhere. Off screen, I also ironed those folds in so they would sit perfectly crisp and meet exactly where I wanted them to and hide that zipper a little bit more seamlessly. So I guess the moral of the story is even if it's a project you love, occasionally there might be a least favorite part of it. For me, it's zippers. And if zippers are also your least favorite part of a project, don't hesitate to just baste it in or sew, hand sew it in if that's less stressful. Do what you need to do to accomplish your project.
So even with all of the machine sewing that I was able to pull off on this dress, there are still some bits that are better just done by hand. That's going to be things like tacking the facing down around the metal zipper so that I didn't break a needle trying to sew around the metal zipper. Doing some of the smaller basting stitches with the facing to try and keep my neckline looking nice. And just little tidbits like that. So even on this project where it is completely modern, there's still some hand sewing. Congratulations. All right, YouTube peoples, let's talk about some fitting issues. Um, I French seamed this together using the appropriate amount of seam allowance that I added. And we are looking way too big. Let's see here. I've got like an extra roughly three quarters of an inch on each side, so an inch and a half around my rib cage. Now, one fit issue I might be having is that I'm bustier than the model and the probable intention of this dress. So rather than wearing it up here, I'm wearing it basically at the bra band, which made it look a lot less awkward on my figure. But because of that, your bra band, your rib cage measurement is narrower than your bust, and I cut it to fit my bust measurement. So, what I think we are going to do is pin this in a little bit to the top of my hip. I did not close off my facing yet, so I can just go from the edge of the side facing all the way down and maybe tack down some of that excess. That way, if I ever gain weight or fluctuate the weight, I have that excess that I can pull this back out and continue to wear my cool dress for years. Um, I've got more skirts on, don't worry. But hey look, fuzz. I really love this pattern and how this is turning out so far. Um, I kept a very narrow hem on my on my skirt overall. There we go. And that helped me do this without having to do a whole lot of fussing, but you can see it's trying to wrinkle a little bit. So I'm going to iron that hem down so it's flat and sucks in any of the extra, extra fabric from the circle skirt. And then I've got a fun witchy 50s dress, as I seem to do every year now. This might be a pandemic tradition I keep. Uh -huh. So let's get started doing this.
So once my alterations are done, I end up having to go and hand tack down all of the facings as well as the shoulder straps because I don't really want to play the adjustable shoulder strap or the button shoulder strap game this pattern called for originally. I'm just going to sew it all in place and I think my buttons end up being decorative. I still like the look of them, but I didn't care if they actually ever functioned the way a button is supposed to. But first we have to actually get the straps in place so that I know where they're at, right? But even if my buttons aren't functional, I still have to pick which ones I actually want. I went over to Joann's again when I realized I didn't have enough silver buttons and picked up a couple different options they had. Um, there was this plastic one and this steel one. They both kind of looked good with the fabric. But ultimately, I wanted this one because I can do some nail polish enameling to this one try and make it a little bit more special all on its own. Um, there's going to be a bunch of different tutorials out there. I just used the random nail polish I had on hand. And ironically, it's held up pretty well through several washes and other things. Um, when I do this to buttons, I just glob it into the section that I want it to fill in. And after I get all of these sections really filled in, I'll run my finger over any raised portions of the button or metal, whatever it ends up being, to try and remove any of the excess before it has a chance to dry. This is by no means how real enamel works because that's melting glass, but it works all right for a Halloween dress, right? I wanted to thank you for coming along with me on my journey to make this dress. It's actually kind of becoming a tradition of mine to make a new vintage inspired dress each year with the fun 
quote-unquote Halloween fabrics that you find over at Joann's or whatever other fabric supply shop that you might come up with. And I... The thing is, is that I wear those dresses year-round. I have gotten so much wear out of my galaxy, spacey-inspired walk-away dress. And I have been wearing this one probably once a week since I got it retailored and pulled into my exact measurements. I had been thinking about releasing this with Halloween, but I thought it would actually be more impactful to release it after Halloween and let you guys know to fl fly your own freak flag and dress however you want in your day-to-day -day life. Um, I hope you are having a magnificent day, if you haven't already. I would love it if you would subscribe and join us for some mo more fun sewing adventures. I don't always do vintage, but it pops up every now and then. Seems to be the going theme right now. And we, we have a lot of fun around here doing fun sewing stuff. Until next time, I hope you have a marvelous day, and thanks for watching.